different, but we're going to go ahead and um, get started. So just a little about TASC, we're a parent training and information center. We serve all ages and all abilities. We serve six counties in Southern California. Listed here. Our mission is to educate and empower people with disabilities and their families. Whoops, I skipped. Okay, so what types of services does TASC offer? So we basically, since we're a parent training and information center, we offer workshops, trainings, um, information on all different types of topics, including special education rights and responsibilities, um, assistive technology, and much more. Um, we offer one-on-one -on -one consultations. They're called IEP consultations, which is a nice service that we offer. Uh, you can make an appointment. Right now, we're doing them through Zoom or over the phone or through email uh, with our family support specialists if you have questions on your IEP documents or just about anything pertaining to um, special education. Uh, listed here are some of the other services that we offer, and we are all um, trying right now to move our services uh, to, virtual, <laughs> to virtual offerings. So our technology center is located in Brea. We provide assistive technology workshops and webinars, such as this one. Um, individualized lab appointments, where you can make an appointment and come in and try out different types of technology. Right now, we can do this. I knew my dog was going to bark. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um, right now, we can offer this through Zoom, through email or over the phone, um, depending on what you're looking for. Um, another service I wanted to tell you about is our Project Communicate. We offer a one-hour on, one hour free assistive technology, AAC, consultation with our speech language pathologist. Her name is Bernadette Kennard, and she does a wonderful job. She specializes in AAC. Those are free for families or for professionals. And right now she's doing those virtually. So if you're interested, uh, email myself or Liz and we'll have our information here in a moment. So I just wanted to let you know that we are offering services right now during the pandemic. We're trying to offer, uh, still serve all of our families and our professionals. And we're offering support by telephone, by Zoom, or Skype, or other platforms, and through email. So if you call and you get a message, you get a, bleh, sorry, a voicemail, please leave a message. Uh, the, the phone does ring through to our receptionist at her house, um, but we're getting back to people same day. We're offering all of these services again as well as we can virtually, but we're definitely here to help you. I wanted to point out our resource page on the TASC website. We've put a brand new page up of resources, uh, COVID, you know, COVID resources. Also, uh, Liz, my co-host here, we have put together a huge 14 page list of homeschooling resources that are they're all free and they're up on our um, website. And then every couple days I post free resources on the task website. I mean, the task Facebook page. Sorry, I keep getting pop-ups. Okay, we also offer Tech Tidbits, which is our assistive technology focused e-newsletter. E it's free and it goes out once a month. If you're interested, go ahead and visit our um, the Tech Center portion of our website and subscribe. Okay, before I start that, I'm sorry, I got 
I got so ahead of myself, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Laura Martinez. I'm the Assistive Technology Program Manager at TAS. And here with me, I have Elizabeth Ortega. She's our Assistive Technology Specialist. She's going to be running the board and answering questions and troubleshooting. So welcome, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us. Sorry, technical difficulty. There we go. So what is AAC? So AAC stands for Augmentative and Alternative Communication, and it includes all forms of communication other than oral speech. So anything that's used to express thoughts, wants, needs, and ideas. So we use AAC every day when we make facial expressions or gestures. I know I talk with my hands a lot. Um, or when we use symbols or pictures to write or we text, right? So assistive technology versus AAC. So here I have the federal definition of an assistive technology device. So I'm sure you can read that, but basically it's anything that's used to increase, maintain or improve functional capabilities of people with disabilities. So AAC falls under the larger umbrella of assistive technology. And we'll get to an illustration of that in just a moment. Liz, have you put the hand up, handouts up in the chat yet? Yes, I did, and I will send them again in a minute. Okay. For those who, for the ones who entered afterwards. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so these are all just examples of AAC, um, picture symbols, texting, uh, <laughs> facial expressions, sign language, and then um, assistive technology devices. So here is the assistive technology umbrella. This is just my visual that I like to use. And under that umbrella falls different types of technology for different things. So it could be for physical, like aids for daily living, like something that might help you um, get your shoes on or button your shirt, something like that. Uh, it can include access to the computer or your iPad other than direct touch. Um, under education and learning aids, there are all kinds of low tech items. Uh, software and then specialized applications. Um, TASC currently has over 3,300 specialized applications. Uh, we're going to be talking today about communication or AAC, and we're going to talk mostly about no, low, and mid tech. We're going to talk a tiny bit about high tech. And then there's again technology for vision and for hearing. So those all fall under the uh, the assistive technology umbrella. Okay. Sorry, I keep getting pop-ups for the waiting room and it's distracting. So AAC is basically the part of AT that focuses on communication. So when you're creating an AAC system for somebody, it's usually an integrated group of components used to enhance communication. So again, the components in can include sorry, forms of AAC, symbols, different selection techniques, which we'll talk about, and different strategies. So AAC is not just a device or a button that talks, but it, it uses a, a large spectrum of applications, including all of these things. Because we, um, those of us that are verbal, when we talk, we don't just use our voices, we use gestures, movements, and different different modes. Okay, an AAC system. So again, um, like I mentioned in the previous um, slide, so a person might use multiple modalities or different systems, uh, depending on what they're doing, based on the context, um, who they're talking to, and their communicative intent. So a well-designed AAC system needs to be flexible and adaptable. 
meaning you're not going to take your iPad with a communication app probably into the bathtub or the swimming pool. You need something to use alternatively during that time. And you also want to allow for changes in vocabulary as needed over time. Hopefully they're going to have more and more symbols and increase their vocabulary. And then you want to maximize the individual's abilities to communicate. So if they have a, um, a sound they make for yes or no, they can still use those sounds um, or eye blinks or popping noises or whatever they have. You want to incorporate all of that. So here's an example of an AAC system um, for a swimming pool. Maybe they have swimming therapy, maybe they just swim for fun, but um, this I actually is somebody I know. Um, they do swim therapy and they put printed out symbols that they might need in the pool to talk, put it in a Ziploc baggie, taped it to the kickboard, there they have their communication system. So with the different types of AAC, there are aided, there are aided and unaided. So I'm going to talk about unaided first. So all unaided means is basically you don't need any tools, no physical aids, you're just using what's on your body, what you can do with your body. So things like sign language, gestures, facial expressions, maybe you have a nonverbal yes or no response, like an eye blink, something like that. With aided communication, you're going to use some sort of a tool. So might be a picture or photo, might be lower high tech technology. You might use a communication board, which we're going to show you and give you access to. It might be object symbols, which we're going to talk about, or it might be written words or letters. I have a friend that's deaf. We communicate a lot through texting or through chat. So who uses AAC? Basically, augmentative and alternative communication can be helpful for anyone that's unable to use their speech in order to get their communication needs met. And this can inc include individuals with all kinds of um, disabilities or uh, other issues, just anyone that's unable to communicate their thoughts. So what are the prerequisite skills for AAC? Sometimes we get tripped up on this. There aren't any prerequis prerequisite skills uh, for AAC. Anyone can use anyone can use it. So you don't need to be a certain age, you don't need to have a certain motor or cognitive criteria, anybody can use it. I have links here to videos um, in the interest of time and not hopping back and forth and the fact that everyone has different internet speeds. I'm not going to show the videos during the webinar, but I wanted you to have access to them. So um, this is a picture and the link is to the video of a little boy named Culligan, and he uses a pod system, which is this book, which is pretty complex, and he's two years old, and he has a lot of motoric issues, and he uses it beautifully. So I thought this was interesting. So how people communicate. So in a, any given day or uh, a typical person that has verbal communication, only 35% of how we communicate is verbally. The rest is done through facial expressions. Tone of voice is a huge, huge thing. Depending on how you say something, it might get taken a different way. Um, how you move, how you appear, your gestures, whether or not you're making eye contact, your posture, this all can um, make a difference in what you say. So when we think about someone who may not be able to, um, to use gestures or to control how their face moves or um, that's nonverbal, you can't hear their tone of voice, 
all these things need to be taken into consideration. Okay, I'm going to just briefly talk about no tech. So no tech is just like what it sounds like. Um, so basically, we all communicate every day without saying a word. So again, some examples are gestures, sign language, a nonverbal yes or no response, like an eye blink or a head nod, um, different body language. And then what else? There's all different ways that we communicate without saying anything. I know I can give the look to my daughter and she knows exactly what that means. Um, I'm sure a lot of you parents out there know what I'm talking about. Um, so it just really, uh, really depends. So here are some no tech examples. Again, gestures, sign language, facial expressions. Moving on to low tech. So low tech communication, they're usually defined as those that generally don't need batteries or electricity or electronics to meet the communication needs of the user. They're often really simple aids created by placing letters, words, or phrases, or pictures or symbols in a board or a book, which may be accessed directly or indirectly, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. And I'm going to show you some examples. So here are some low-tech examples. I'm going to be showing you many types of letter boards and theme boards. Um, there are also choice boards and topic boards, which I will show you and give you links to examples that you can download for free. Um, there are communication flipbooks, which we're going to see. Uh, the PECs or Picture Exchange Communication Program, which I'm sure many people have heard of. And then there are single button devices like the one on the top here where they're pushing the button that says hot dog. Not sure why it says hot dog, but um, the, the second picture shows somebody handing a symbol. They might be handing the pretzel symbol, hoping to get pretzels in return. The bottom I wanted to point out, the bottom picture, that's a slap bracelet made by Boardmaker. And it's a way to communicate and you wear it on your wrist. And you could also make one very easily printing out symbols and using any kind of flat bracelet that you already have. And I wanted to say, if you have questions um, regarding kiddos you work with or, uh, or adults or your own children or people, people you, you know, if you're a caregiver, whatever it is that you need, if you have something personal that you want to ask, and you don't want to ask in front of the group, please feel free to email myself or Liz. I'll ask Liz to put our emails in the chat, but they are at the end of the um, presentation on the handouts. Please feel free to reach out. So here are just some more low tech examples of boards. Uh, the top left is a PEX book, or one example of a PEX book. There are different boards, um, uh, just different ways to communicate for different people. There are so many different kinds. And we have tons. Once we open again, I encourage you to come make an appointment and come in and look at and try, try them all. So this is an example of um, an alphabet board. This one happens to be in um, ABC order instead of the QWERTY keyboard order. And this could be used in many ways for someone that needs communication. I included the link at the bottom. This one is for purchase, but honestly, I just took a copy of it, kept a copy. But how this could be used is either someone can point to it and directly select spelling what they want. Or if you have somebody that's more motorically involved, you could, as the um, facilitator, go along the side and touch where the one is, and then they will signal with a head nod or whatever they have. Is it in that row? No. And then you touch the two. Is it in that row? 
No. Three, is it in that row? Yes. Then you go to saying each letter in the row. Is it M? Is it N? Is it O? Is it P? Yes, it's P. And you start over. So that's one way to communicate. It's quite involved, but there are a lot of people who communicate that way. Uh, next is a school-themed communication board. I included the links in your handouts. These are free from Teachers Pay Teachers. And if you don't know about Teachers Pay Teachers, you can sign up for a free account on their website. And they have many things um, that cost. They're usually pretty reasonable, a couple dollars each. But they also have just hundreds of things that you can download for free. And you can do a search like free letter boards or free, you know, AAC boards or free communication, depending on what you're looking for. So this one is just school themed. It has different things that um, you might do during your school day. Reading and playing and eating and that sort of thing. So this one is a communication board for readers and spellers. So not everybody needs pictures. We have a lot of clients that are literate and they can spell and they can write and pictures just slow them down. So this again is on Teachers Pay Teachers. It's a free board, so I included the link if it's something that you would like. And this is a way for people to talk um, using phrases and words. This is a core language communication board. Um, again, teachers pay teachers. I promise I don't work for them. They just have a lot of free boards that I use and that I like. And what core language is, is basically the words that you use most often throughout the day. So you might use a core board and then have a theme board on the, on the top so that you're able to communicate uh, fully or more fully. Okay, next we have tangible object cards. So some people, um, when they're looking at a symbol, uh, you know, or a line drawing of a, um, I don't know if you can see here, there's a picture of the, when you go into the restroom, how there's a male or female, picture of a male or a female, they might not relate that to having to go to the restroom but a small plastic toy toilet that might be something more tangible that makes more sense or some um, astroturf, you know, for grass or for going outside. So uh, different, so the ones, the pictures at the top are ones that you can purchase and then the ones at the bottom are different ones that people have made. So maybe a cup, they're, the cup that they use to drink out of, or um, you know, an actual sock <laughs> for for that sort of thing. Um, sorry, there she goes again. Emily, sorry. Um, so a lot of times with tangible object cards, you want to um, use objects that are easy to recognize and discriminate, discriminate, and you might want to use it for someone with a lower cognitive level or visual impairment. Um, sorry, my daughter came and got my dog. Okay. The fun of presenting from home. Okay, here are some examples of packs. And we get more into how each um, system works in our second workshop, which is our um, AAC outside of the box, which we'll be offering down the road. Um, but these are just examples of PEC systems, different ones. And then the video link that I've included is uh, a real life example of a kiddo using PEC with his uh, therapist. And it kind of shows what works and what does not. This is a picture of a pod book. And the POD system is really an amazing communication system. It stands for Pragmatic Organization Dynamic Display. Uh, and the video that I have up is uh, 
a family that they have several children that they've adopted that all have communication difficulties and they all use pod in different ways with different means. And so um, the video is an example, but I like to encourage everyone, if you see on the side it says We Speak Pod, if you go to YouTube and put in We Speak Pod and subscribe to them, they have so many videos demonstrating and using the pod system. And uh, the mom is just so good at it and so um, innovative with the way she uses it with her different kiddos. So it's, it's very much worth a look. And in the handouts that Liz posted in the uh, chat, you should have copies of the slides and a resource sheet, which will list all the different vendors for the things we're talking about today. If you came in late, you won't see the handout, so Liz will be posting them again at the end, right? Okay. Um, we're going to go on to mid-tech. And mid-tech devices typically require a power source, usually batteries. They have multiple levels, typically, and they have increased function compared to lower no-tech devices. Um, they usually use uh, synthesized or recorded speech versus digitized or computerized speech. What's nice about the synthesized or recorded speech is you can record it in any language and put the pictures in any language, which is nice. Also, you can record messages on the fly pretty quickly and change out the pictures depending on the situation or what, what people are doing, which is really helpful. So here are some examples of mid-tech AAC. So there's all kinds of devices here. There's um, a step-by-step -step over on the top, top left with um, one button, but it has different levels. So you can program in different, um, different messages depending on what you're looking for. Um, next, you have a, one from en enabling devices. There's four different choices and you can actually, it has spots on the top to put a tangible object, which helps bridge that gap in teaching um, what the physical item is um, and here's what the picture of it is. Um, over to the right side are the GoTalk products. Um, we have, I think, all of the GoTalk products. They're very um, diverse and you can use them in different situations. They have what's called a static display, not a dynamic display, meaning I don't know if you can see the picture on the bottom right, where you take out the, the card or the, the printout with the different um, symbols on it. You put in a different one, and then there are levels. So you can have um, different levels. I think it's five. Is that right, Liz? Five different levels on the GoTalk. And so you can have them um, five different things programmed in and you can just switch out whatever the topic is. So maybe one is school, one is ordering at lunch, one is um, functional needs, you know, one is, you know, something else. And you just simply change the level. You hit the, the big button, change the level, match it to whatever your overlay is and you're ready to go. The other thing I love about the GoTalk products is the directions to do everything are glued to the back. So it's really nice for us. We have hundreds of uh, pieces of equipment. It's great to have the instructions right there when you need it. Um, on the bottom left, we just have a talking photo album. Those are great uh, for communication and for language. Um, and then in the middle at the bottom is a four button talker by enabling devices. And again, you have the opportunity to put up the cards at the top. So they're easier to see visually. Some more mid tech examples, the tech talk and tech speak. Uh, bottom left is the talk track 
wearable communicator. The middle is the Quick Talker uh, by AbleNet, very similar to the GoTalk devices. And then some big Mac um, switches. So even though we're talking about low and mid tech, I wanted to just include high tech because it feels weird not to at least mention um, high tech devices. So high tech AAC aids are typically electronic devices um, which permit the storage and retrieval of messages. So it's, they hold a lot more information and provide for uh, a lot more variety of conversation and things like that. Um, they're also referred to as speech generating devices or voice communication aids. Um, they can include dedicated devices or an iPad with communication apps. So here are just some examples of high tech devices. For all AAC, especially high tech devices, uh, we recommend that you definitely get an, an AAC evaluation or assessment by a speech language pathologist that understands AAC. It's really important to match the right device to the user because there are so many variables like language systems, motor planning, and um, things like that. So it's really important. Okay, next we're going to talk about communication symbols. And to me, this is really important. The, the really important part about beginning with communication, especially if you're going to be using, um, well, any kind, low, mid, or high tech. So when we communicate, all communication is achieved through the use of symbols. So um, driving down the street, any three-year-old can probably pick out a McDonald's sign by the logo, right? Or Target or places, Chuck E. Cheese, places they like to go. Um, usually McDonald's is the one that people recognize, uh, kiddos recognize the most. Um, so basically symbols take the form of words, sounds, gestures, or visual images, and they're used to con convey ideas and beliefs. So for example, I put a red octagon here. So no matter what country you're in, whether you speak the language or not, if you see a red octagon, you're probably going to assume that, that means stop, right? Whoops, I'm skipping ahead. Okay, so there are all kinds of symbol sets, and this by no means is um, all of them. It's just I'm mentioning the most probably the most commonly used ones. So Mayor Johnson picture symbols or PCS. Um, most people know um, they're used with the Toby Dynavox products and with hundreds of other products. Uh, the next one will be the Unity language system. There's a picture on the right here where with an apple of the Unity language system, which is really a complex system. Uh, there are symbol sticks and many others, and I'm going to show you some examples and then give you links where you can go see them and try them out. So these are all different communication symbol generators. There are certainly more. Um, and what they do is enable you to create symbol-based communication and educational materials, depending on what they are. So the first one I have listed is BoardMaker. And what's nice about BoardMaker is they're all online now. So you can have an account, access them online, and not only can you uh, make and save your own materials, but you can access many other people's materials and just edit them to, how you, to what you need. Um, and you can sign up for a free 30-day trial of BoardMaker. Just go to their website and try it out. So that's the top, the picture, the top picture on the right. Uh, the next set is Imagine Symbols, which is my picture on the bottom right. And those are by Attainment Company. Those come on a CD where you use the CD and, and make things with their symbols. Uh, and they have templates and things that you can use. 
Uh, next are widget symbols. Those are from the UK. And then lesson picks. I wanted to talk about lesson picks really quick and let you know that they have, um, it's a, I did a, actually took a webinar yesterday on lesson picks and it's even more amazing than I thought. I think, I believe it's $39 for a year and you have online access and you can access all of their symbols and you can create boards, games, they have templates for just about everything you can think of. And they have, um, it's really intuitive and they have tutorials and I just, I've, I've found it uh, really useful since we've gotten it. User friendly, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. I included sources of free AAC symbols that I found. Um, some are better than others. Again, you know, um, they're free. But if you're looking for something to start out with or, or if you're looking for specific symbols, most of these have searchable um, tools where you can go in and look up a specific word. On the right side, I have here three pictures, all from different free symbol sets, and they all mean the same thing. So can, can anyone guess what those symbols mean? You type it in chat if you know. Hungry. Okay. Again, these will all be on your handouts. So here's a, an example of the PCS symbols by Mayor Johnson. And just wanted you to give, to give you an idea of how different the picture symbols can look. So depending on what you're using, um, it may take a little bit to learn those symbols or to understand that uh, a certain thing, a certain picture means a certain thing. And we're going to illustrate that with an activity in just a moment. So I left a, a link on the bottom so you can go to BoardMaker and see different examples. They do have a bunch of free um, layouts and boards that you can download. And again, they have that free 30-day um, subscription. This is also BoardMaker PCS. This is their high contrast symbols um, for someone who has low vision or someone who just responds better to the black background, depending on um, vision or different things. Some, some people just prefer it. Okay, these are symbol sticks and they're used for the news to you and um, the link here is there's a link here that um, where you can get to their website, but I just wanted to illustrate um, on the bottom right the blocks. Does anyone know what that what that symbol means with the three blocks and the arrow. If you do, type it in chat. If you don't, you can just do this. Or you can thumbs up if you do and thumbs down if you don't. How are we doing, Liz? Anybody guess it? Yes, bigger one, biggest, largest, bigger. Yep, it's big. big. It can be big. It can be biggest, it can be large, it can be largest, just depending um, on what they're talking about or the context of the, the question. And so what I'm trying to get across, which we'll hopefully get across with our activity is, um, sometimes people are given symbols to look at and to use and to communicate with, and they're only given a few minutes or maybe just an hour and if you're, if you can't read and you don't see the, the um, label above or below it, you have to try to guess what that means. And it's not always obvious. So I just want to point that out because when we're trying to use symbols, it takes time, just like learning any other language. 
So this is an example of the Unity language system. And this is used by the Pranky Romic company. And the Unity language system has its own, it's really its own language system. Um, for more information on Unity or on the Pranky Romic company, that's, they've been around for years and years. Um, there's a link here. And they have plenty of free um, boards and things you can use too. This is um, the PRC Unity Word Power Language System. Again, for someone who doesn't need symbols, someone who's literate, symbols are just going to slow them down. Um, that would be like us trying to type on a typewriter and having symbols and us trying to figure out where the heck are the letters? We just need the letters, you know? So this would be a board or a setup for someone who doesn't need pictures. So we're going to do an activity. And what I'm going to have you do is choose either sentence number one or sentence number two and try to decode it. I'll give you a hint. Both sentences are the same sentence, but in two different um, symbol sets. So if you've got it, give us a thumbs up or type it in the chat, or if you think you've got it. And again, what I'm trying to illustrate is it's not always easy to read symbols if you've never seen them before and you don't have, and you can't read and you don't have the label above them saying what they are. How are we doing, Liz? Um, there's two. I like to go outside, and I would like to go outside on a walk. No. <laughs> Close. <laughs> you got no, to go. No clue. In the morning, I go out the house and no school. <laughs> that does look like no school. Yay! Anyone else? Tonight, I am going dot, dot, dot. OK. It's today, I, and then am, going. You guys got going right. On vacation. Don't ask me why that's vacation. I like the no school. I guess on the bottom, when you can see them walking all over, the map, right? But yeah, that's today I'm going on vacation. Who would have known that? Probably not many folks, right? So again, there's a learning curve there. I got one more. You guys ready to try? Again, same sentence, two different um, symbol sets. The top symbol set is uh, PCS, which is board maker. The bottom one is cough drop symbol set. I'm going to take a sip of water while you guys figure this one out. I'm sorry that top one is blurry. I didn't realize. Um, someone guessed this is very hard. Close. Very close. Pick Anyone up this else? one and pick up this one and I am mad. The first time I got a fever, I am feeling, feeling hot um, temperature. This is too hard. <laughs> I am mad. This is very frustrating. <gasps> bing, 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 bing. Who got that one? Um, LT. That's all they have on their name. Good job, LT. LT. Yeah, this is very frustrating. I love the smoke coming, the smoke coming out of the nose. Lis Her name is Lisette. Good job, Lisette. So just to illustrate, it's difficult. That's just what I wanted to get across. So we're going to talk about AAC access methods really briefly. And um, so basically, depending on physical abilities or limitations, users might 
um, indicate the appropriate message with a different body part. Um, they might use their head with a switch or a different pointer, which I'm going to show you, maybe a mouth stick. Um, they might uh, have to use scanning, like, like I explained before, where somebody is pointing out different things and they'll give their, their response. So direct access can include direct selection with any body part or a mouth stick or anything like that. Eye gaze, um, pointing, oh, pointing devices like a head pointer or a mouth stick. Um, I have a friend, I think he's on this webinar. Um, he uses his toes to type on his communication device. Um, and then indirect access would include scanning. And this is a, this YouTube video shows a, a girl and her mom, and the mom simply goes through and points to each thing and says it out loud. And when they get to, I think it's, where do you want to go? And she points to like the library, you know, the store. And then she says the mall and the girl pops her lips. Okay, you want to go to the mall? Let's go, you know, that sort of a thing. So there's all different ways to communicate by all different methods. So here are some different examples. Direct selection, like with your finger, with a pointing device. There's my friend's toe in the middle there, typing. Um, uh, the bottom right is somebody using a manual eye gaze board where you stand behind them and they look at different blocks and then once they guess the block, then you read off the things within the blocks. The top right is my friend Rick, and he ha uses a high-tech device, and he actually invented this chin pointer, and he uses the chin pointer when he's using his device, but then his the headset, you can un unscrew it and flip it up, and it turns into a head pointer that's above his head. And what he uses that for is when he paints so he can see what he's doing when he paints. Um, because trying to paint with your chin doesn't really work. You can't see, right? So all different ways to access. I just want you to think about, you know, different ways. And then we're to our question portion. And while you're thinking of questions or typing questions in the in the chat, I do want to let you know that Liz will be posting a link to SurveyMonkey in the chat. And we ask that you fill out our evaluation form. And if you put your contact information when you fill out the evaluation form, you'll be put in a drawing for a $25 gift card of your choice. If you don't want to click on the chat and you have your cell phone, just turn it on, open your camera, and just point it right at that QR code on the screen and it will pop up with a link and it'll pull the link right up on your phone. Sorry, you can't see, but it'll pull the link right up on your phone. Does that show better? I can't see. So I ask that you please fill that out. So I'll leave that up for a minute. And then the last slide has our contact information. And um, please feel free to contact myself or Liz. Liz does speak Spanish, so if you're more comfortable with Spanish or if you have Spanish speaking friends or families that um, need some help, uh, we are going to eventually offer this in Spanish as well. But if you have specific questions or are looking for specific resources, Again, please do reach out. Liz, did you have any questions? One question um, says, I've been trying to get protocol. When do they have cells? Also, is there a way to become certified? Certified in what? AAC. Oh, that's a whole other webinar. <laughs> you can email me and I can talk to you about that. And since we're not talking about high tech AAC, um, today, actually, Proloquo, even though that's not what we're talking about this webinar, it was on sale this month. We posted it on our Facebook page. I believe it was the beginning of April, but if you email me, I'll double check. 
or if you go to the assistive wear website, they'll know, but it's usually the beginning of April. Most of the AAC vendors have things on sale for Autism Awareness Month. Any other questions? No other questions. Okay. Again, if you please fill out your survey, we would appreciate it. Um, I'm going to um, put, you have a question? No, no, no. Okay. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and put up our contact information. You can get a hold of either myself, which is Laura Martinez, or Elizabeth Ortega by emailing us. That's usually the quickest way. Or you can call our office and talk to our receptionist, Adriana, and she will get a message to us either way. Also, sorry. Also, I did um, take all the email addresses from everyone who wants a handout, and I did receive a lot of the emails already. I will be sending out the handouts and resources to those emails. Um, one more thing, TASK has another live webinar on April 30th at 6.30 p.m. It's Youth Voices Matter COVID-19 Challenges. And this webinar is for youth who are facing challenges during COVID-19 school closures. Participants will learn about concerns faced by their peers related to school closures, cyberbullying and mental health, as well as strategies and resources, resources for coping. Um, if you would like to register, I will um, post the link on the chat right now, or you can visit our task um, website, go into the calendar, and you'll have the information on there as well. And they are really encouraging parents to attend as well. And again, I don't know if you want to post the handouts in chat for the people that came late, or if you're just going to send them, just do it that, that way, that's up to you. And the resource sheet, and were you able to post the free board for COVID communication board? I will post that board right now. Okay. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Sorry for the hiccups with my dog barking. Um, I had a talk with her before the webinar, but apparently she didn't listen. Um, and then again, if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. You got it up, Liz? Give me one second. I'm getting okay. to it right now. In doing research over the last few weeks, I've found tons of great resources. So if there's something you're looking for um, regarding communication or assistive technology, please reach out. And again, we have a ton on the task website right now. Got it up, Liz? The, it's there, yes. Okay, great. So we'll leave that up for just a minute, and then um, we're going to sign off. Does anyone else need the link to the SurveyMonkey or the QR code? I'll just put it back up on that slide for a minute. So you should receive a um, copy of the PowerPoint slides, a separate resource sheet, and then a free board. Thank you all for attending. And we'll be doing another workshop here soon. Um, we're working on it right now called Bab Freebies. So it'll all be free assistive technology. All right, Liz. I will stop the recording now. Okay. Thank you all for attending.